Welcome to The Study, a Bible study lesson in the form of a discussion. I am your host, JP, and this week I have with me... Tara Say. I'm Milton. And you got your boy, Mark Misiaki. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and moving on. I don't exactly know what our topic is because that is going to our teacher today, which is Milton Keys. What's up? Take yeah, it, ready? Take it away. So I was thinking about protest. I was see reading a sermon from my friend in her intro. Also starts with protest. Shout out to me again, one of our past guests on the podcast. And a lot of times when preachers go to protest they go in their ceremonial gown so they got a clergy color on or they have a robe on here's our first question is a protest a spiritual act so if you go to protest Kids being locked up in cages. Is that spiritual? All right, let's 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 break this down in several different parts. Okay. First of all, I would say it is spiritual in theory, but physical in act. Meaning I'm I'm facing against you know principalities and demons that are that are not of this world when I'm facing when I'm protesting against you know whoever I'm protest, protesting against but at the same time it is me physically doing something to protest I mean but are all most spiritual acts are physical but the 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 this question you're generally asking is a question that is that is almost generalized to everything. Everything we do is a spiritual act. True, but is this more spiritual than carnal? Like if I punch you, that's a carnal act. If I touch a young lady in the wrong way, that's a carnal act. If I cuss you out. It's a carnal act. So our only two options here are carnal and spiritual? It can, depends. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, go can ahead. I chime in? Um, I feel like it is a spiritual act um, based on your intentions behind it. You are doing it for a reason, for a cause, to make someone's life better, if that makes sense. So, you are, give me an example of a protest. Protesting uh, child abuse. So, yes, if you're protesting child abuse, you are doing this for a child of God so that they can live their best life. So... (laughs) What if I what if I throw a monkey wrench in that? How about protesting the uh, taking down of a Confederate statue? Oh, that's a good point. That's what that's where I, where I said the intention behind it. Why are you doing it? it? So if you're doing it so that we can live a better life on this physical planet to serve God to serve God yeah to serve God is does that make it more of a spiritual act? I, look, the 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 framing of the question is what I kind of have a problem with because okay. if you, because no matter what, both how exactly was this question framed again? <laughs> the framing of the question was <laughs> is protesting a spiritual act. I don't understand why you have a problem with that. Okay, because go ahead. because specifically targeting protesting as a spiritual act when it's, everything is spiritual. If we if we've agreed we've agreed on this podcast before that everything we do is a spiritual act, and then saying is protesting a spiritual act, the answer would obviously be yes, based on what we've already kind of concluded, and then giving us the option of there's difference between carnal and spiritual. So now I've got two spiritual acts here 
carnal and spiritual and which do i differentiate between the two so i'm like i i see you carnal by to... definition is is not spiritual let, but, okay. let me go deep because this is a debate i have often that the church should not be political why shouldn't they because the argument is jesus wasn't Jesus, I think Jesus was political. Jesus was political because he lived in a theocracy. Exactly. They thought the king was God, so anything Jesus said that says he was God was inherently political. But there's this separation of church and state notion that I'm trying to get at with you guys. Or so all the social justice we're different because we're in a black church. So we're yeah. historically used to some sort of social justice. But there are other churches including some black ones who believe that the church should stay out of politics and they wouldn't dare go to a protest, especially not in the church or the clerical attire. Well, what do they say about Martin Luther King then? Well, actually, okay, so <laughs> before, we, before we move forward, I want to say this. Um, because we all, I can already assume, we all believe that church should be political at least at that's the very good, at the very yeah. minimum that's is, can i can i say that there's that, a that's line some, of how political point, yeah yeah okay okay, okay cool so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna play devil's advocate and go on the other side of this and not believe of course like a devil's advocate. Yeah. <laughs> so uh just so we can know this moving forward i will make the case that we should not um you're gonna fail yeah so okay and? so my question is what do those people say about martin luther king he was obviously a preacher and a social activist. And obviously everybody knows what Martin Luther King stood for and what he did. I <laughs> guess they don't really think of it that way. That would be my first, obviously my first question. That's what I asked. <laughs> first thing well, that came to mind. Well, let's go a little deeper. Should Christians be woke? I don't really like the term woke. Yeah. I think, I think <laughs> like, like woke is a, a, okay, a Christian should be, or at least, no, let me not even say Christians. Uh, anybody should be aware. There we go, aware. You should be aware mm -hmm. of things that are happening, generally so, speaking. awake? So, yeah, so instead woke? of now, but then no. at the same time. Aware look, and look, awake are two look, different things. Aware is, okay, the, here's the problem with, 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 my, with the wokeness, all right? Anybody who think who finds out any hint of truth says they're woke. I'm woke. I'm like that. That's not actually true. <laughs> like, like first of all, me being aware of things, being 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 woke, to me is someone who understands all sides of a particular situation, who's not just looking at one particular angle, but sees all of it or understands the truth holistically, not just. I know my side now. I'm woke. Like if I if I know if I find out a piece of information about about uh, you know the government or something like that, and that automatically makes me woke. That's that's ridiculous because everybody can find something on on Google right now and be woke because of something they saw on Wikipedia. But if I understand something holistically, like I know how things work, I can I can say I'm aware, but I'm not truly because there because ah. Woke to me sounds like you got to the end of the road and you're like, I, I, I'm there. I'm at that. I'm at that level of I'm aware of everything when you're not. To me, woke sounds like I just opened my eyes and saw this. Woke I'm is woke. The, woke is the <laughs> new enlightened. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. But ah, people act like they know right, but much no, more. Can Christians be woke, though? Can Sometimes. Christians be woke? Should. I think question? the question was should. Should. Yeah, but, oh, should. But can I answer? I got to go for it. How you going to answer your own question? He can answer his own question. It's a discussion. <laughs> Dang, just attack the brother. <laughs> I got a problem with woke because woke folks are usually of oh, Christianity, the white man religion, or they got all this other stuff 
they add to this woke thing. I mean, woke does not necessarily mean you know the truth. It I think that's what Mark was kind of saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then also uh, to 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 piggyback off off of that, I think um, that's true of any group of people right even it, it doesn't whatever the next thing is going to be you're going to have people who are going to know just up two percent of it and claim to be it like i'm i'm I, there are christians who know two percent of what god is actually like and, and claim to be i'm the most downright christian you could ever you could ever see i'm like ah no you're not really you don't really know about what god's trying to do here and the wise men are the <laughs> but, quietest you know what i'm saying <laughs> so it's like uh you know there's always going to be people in every group that's going to be like i'm the most like oh man i know all this information you got to be woke up here like bro you're not like you're not and somebody so, put them back to so sleep. that's <laughs> but i think i feel you like when your penile Glenn, when man. I see that though, it's because we get marketed and we see the ugly, stupid, ridiculous side of people, and that's more average. So when I see woke people, I see the ridiculous people who say all this information without actually, you know, being aware of what they're talking about. But so can we change the word? And say, Whoa, should man. Christians be aware? aware? Are we talking wanna, politically I aware, want, yeah, socially? I, I want to stay with woke because I want you yeah, to hear something. All right? Yeah. Okay. He's going somewhere. Mm -hmm. This is by my boy <laughs> Preston Perry. And it's called the New Woke Christian. We do not own rights to this audio. To the Christian, there is nothing wrong with being woke. In fact, I believe when we care about injustice, heaven smiles with the grin of a thousand horizons. The angels begin to dance in daylight joy, singing with their whole bodies. A right now praise, thankful that we are evidence that God is a just God. But on the other hand, my soul shivers into an upwards prayer for some of you. I see how Satan has used the anger of black grief to snuff the love out of some of our hearts in the name of black awakening. So, here is a series of seven questions for the new woke Christian. One, are you really woke? Or is it hard to rest because America has made you cold and uncomfortable? I see your loveless tweets on Twitter still trying to masquerade themselves as godly correction, and I often wonder how long will you lie to yourself, too? Is being woke only a trend for some of you? Like hot top fades and ripped jeans, will it one day go out of style? Are you riding the woke train to fit in, or is your heart really in love with justice? Be honest. Some of y'all ain't woke for real. Y'all just fighting sleep and fear that you might miss out on the next hashtag controversy three. Have you mistaken being woke with hatred? Because they're not the same. I must admit when Sandra Bland's body mysteriously was beat into a ghost in jail and her murder became a question mark on CNN news, it made me look at white people with a side eye for a minute too. My flesh rose like an angry revolution and begged me to cling to my people like we all we got while treating all white pigment invisible. But shortly after, I thought about God and how he made a heaven for me and possibly the white lady in my apartment building who becomes unsure of her surroundings every time I get on the elevator. She tries to shrink into a gnat hoping I don't see her or rob her, or kill her. You know, I don't really know for sure, but what I do know is that because of Christ, I owe our love in full for. Has your heritage and culture become your functional savior? If so, the only difference between you and a black Hebrew Israelite is that you claim you believe Jesus is Lord while still putting black people on the throne. I believe God used cell phone camera lynchings as a light to expose how far dark racist America has not come. But could it be Satan has used our anger to make it seem like God ain't really fighting for us for real? Making us adopt these, we be the original people religions. I'm soaking sad seeing so many of my people slowly million man marching themselves away from the faith. But the truth is, some of you put your hope in American Christianity and not the God we saw saw see in half to lead Israel to a land where slavery knew not their names and freedom sung them into a clear sky. Please in my heart. This is not an attack on our blackness, but a cry for my black brothers and sisters not to walk away from our father five. Do you think I'm saying Christians should not be woke? If so, you've missed the point of the poem so far. 
I'm only saying if woke Christians lack balance, they will fall for the first man with a snake tongue exalting the black race over the cross. Men who claim Christianity be the white man religion, tell them to go to heaven. <laughs> tell them to go to heaven. Speak to our slave ancestors who risked their limbs sneaking away in the black of midnight to teach each other the scriptures and context. They didn't try to become their own God to fight against oppression, but trusted the mighty hand of God to do the fighting for them. Christ came to comfort them amongst bloody Mississippi poplar trees. He was their living water in cotton fields when the August heat tried to stroke their bodies into a dishonorable grave. He was their song in the midst of men clothed in unrighteous hatred, attempting to slay the Amago day out of them. In fact, slave master's teachings could find their way inside of their rejuvenated hearts because the Holy Spirit already made a home there and was comfortable too. Ain't it amazing how they woke up every morning with joy and served the same man who enslaved them because they knew God himself lived inside of their chest? They were oppressed while still loving a more blatant enemy and none of us can ever be more woke than they were. Six. Are you hurting? Not fake hurting but for real hurting. Is it hard to do church when it feels like black murders get swept under the pulpit? Are you terrified of hugging someone who voted for Trump on Sunday mornings? Singing songs of praise with saints who never learned the melody of black boy blues, who think we riot for fun, Treat our pain invisible and forget to mourn with us after Bible study. I know how much it stings when some of our churches will fly to Africa to do missions but won't march for Trayvon in Florida. The spit in the face of our struggle when all lives matter sounds like get over it. Why do black people always have to hurt so loud? When some church folks want you to be Christian but not black. Please believe that God sees our frustrations. But blind men not sharing our tears should not make us treat the church like it's not the bride of the God who made Black Lives Matter. Seven. Did you know Christ was a woke Jew from Galilee? Who hated racism with all of his deity but loved the fire and brimstone out of racist men who could see past his brown skin to worship him as God? If we think he won't bring justice for Mike Brown, Tamir Rice, Freddie Gray, Sean Bell, and all the other brown bodies America did not sing the national anthem for, maybe we should stop studying our history just for a moment and scan the scriptures for his resume. Ain't no way God don't see us when he sits on the throne that high. You can't tell me if he cry for help, he won't teach us how to fight and love at the same time. Fox News can't convince God that men made in his image deserve bullets for selling loose cigarettes or reaching for his wallet or wearing the hoodie in the wrong neighborhood. Don't let no lie tell you. Don't let no lie tell you. Christ ain't for black folk. When for centuries he thought so much of us that he allowed us to share in his sufferings. Please believe our roots being plucked from the shores of Africa in 1619. Our grandparents being raised in the Ku Klux Klan South with South African features and black bodies Steel become a steel as blood washed payment today by the hands of cops has been our way of relating to the pain of our savior. Don't let Satan trick you. Make you think the cross we bear as a people ain't beautiful. Like God ain't got no crowns waiting for black craniums after we endure to the end. A day is coming when Jesus will come and swoon over the true woke Christian in all white and rescue him from all injustice. And on that day we will complete the old Negro spiritual song of our ancestors when they looked towards the hills and sang, we shall overcome. And we will be glad we did, like the child who waited patiently for the storm to pass to play beneath the sun. And the woke Christian, tired but yet righteous, will finally get his chance to rest in the sovereignty of his Savior. Yeah, so Preston brings up a lot of things I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. uh, just let's get your initial reaction and then let's dig into the word. Uh, man. Uh, man, I don't uh, have any thoughts. I think my initial reaction is really one how dope that poem is yeah. two like how i really what i think he was getting at is how we don't have balance within our 
knowledge, a seek of, of knowledge of the truth or whatever it is, we put whatever the truth is over God. Even though God is the truth. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now I got now I got my thoughts. All yeah. right, here we go. <laughs> my thought is uh this tells uh it's telling how uh, people like to mold God to their own agendas. Mm. And um, it doesn't matter what the fight or what, you know, even if it's to protest or to not protest, God can, we can kind of make God fit our overall general feelings about whatever. So if God, so if there's something in the Bible that talks about God wanting to, wanting justice, yeah, we're all about trying to, you know, protest. But if there's something in there that the guy said, uh, you know, don't want, don't want to fight or, or turn the other cheek or whatever, whatever it may be, you know, we'll use that to make, us not do what we don't want what we don't want to do it i feel like or to make others do so so because of that it's like um i t- i personally understand granted i don't agree with but i understand why church and state would be a a a, a major separation or why they would want to make those those two things separate because when it wasn't or when when you didn't make it separate there was a lot of you've had the crusades yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And that's, that's that's really a whole case in point thing right there and who's to say it wouldn't happen again now granted no it would look at how we treat muslims it's oh almost happening now so yeah. that's why i'm like ha as much as I, I i i believe that christians should be involved should be aware should be a part of politics, but at the same time, it's like ah, we kind of uh, <laughs> we human beings. We kind of take things a little too overboard now. Yep. Um, my initial reaction was he was speaking the truth, and similar to what Mark was saying about how we make God fit our own agendas, like the part where he was talking about how we'll go to Africa or whatever he said, but we won't march in our own city like that part really stuck out to me and mm-hmm. that's where my thoughts were with that amen let's look at the word here's what i want to do i want to get the word out there i want to teach for about five minutes is 515 five we'll see Okay. Like said, we'll see. It means 20 minutes. <laughs> Let's look at the time. <laughs> you ever heard me teach. It doesn't matter. I haven't. I haven't. It doesn't matter. <laughs> all all, all she preachers knows. are the same. Sorry. I mean, in church, when the pastor said, give me five more minutes, it's never five more minutes. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> all right. Hit me at John 2 14. John. To James, what yes, it's James. Keep? I'm looking at James. We are studying James. You said John. You the one that said it. All right. I'm sleepy. All right, I got you. What? It? You want me to do? It? No. Start at 14. I'll stop you. All right. What is good, dear brothers and sisters? If you say you have faith and don't show it by your actions, can that kind of faith save anyone? Suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing and you say goodbye and have a good day. Stay warm and eat well, but then you don't give that person any food or clothing. What good does that do? So you see, faith itself isn't enough unless it produces good deeds. It is dead and useless. Now someone may argue some people have faith, others have good deeds. But I say, how can you show me your faith if you don't have good deeds? I'll show you my faith by my good deeds. You say you have faith for you believe that there is one God. Good for you. Even the, st- even the demons believe this. And they tremble in, ho- and they tremble in terror. How foolish. Can't you see that faith without good deeds is useless? Don't you remember that our ancestor Abraham was shown to be right with God by his actions when he offered his son Isaac onto the altar. You see, his faith and his actions worked together. His actions made his faith complete. So it happened just as scripture says. Abraham believed God. God counted him as righteous because of his faith. And he was called the friend of God. So you see, we are shown 
to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Amen. So, the text is playing with this notion of doing good stuff and being who God is. Basically, James is saying this. How can you believe God is God and not do nothing about it? How can we go to church and worship and shout and dance and run all over the building and treat each other bad? How can I preach the word to you and treat each other bad? That's why there's such a split in the United States church now. I'm a priest. We got people that are supporting candidates or public officials that are literally mistreating people and they're doing it in the name of God. We got corrupt government things happening by people who say they are Christians. So the question is, how can you say you have faith and you stealing from people? How can you say you have faith and you decide you're going to separate children from the families? Do you know the Methodist Church has their own legal system? And the Methodist Church brought a church law case against the Attorney General on the count of child abuse. So here's what they were saying. If you treat kids like you treat kids, we're going to put you out of the church. Now that sounds evil, but I keep going to my fraternity sorority example. If you're AKA, you wear pink and green or AKA t-shirt. If you're not an AKA, you cannot buy the apparel. It's the only kind of apparel you cannot buy. What the church is saying is we don't treat people like this. You can't treat people like this and say you're a part of our church. And we can talk about judging others if you want, but there has to be a certain time where the church means something. If I say I'm John and Tara says brother, they're not going to hear me bad talk about their father. I can't be JP's brother and talk bad about his daddy. It don't work. It's a two-faced friend. That's, that's a two-faced friend. I can't say I'm a leader of why not. And I got three girls I'm sleeping with. It don't work. We don't stand for that. To protect our identity, we have to stand for something. So what James is saying is, if you say you believe in God, that's cute. So does the devil. (laughs) Satan believes in God, newsflash. Satan knows God personally. But what are you at then that says you represent God? Jesus said, you shall know a fruit by the fruit it bears. So with this social justice, the flip side is, how are we doing stuff? Because if you're not doing it in love, it's still not Christian. So that's the gist of the lesson. But I want to go deep. What's the
the line? What is this balance but between social justice and Christianity? Because I feel like some churches do too much social justice and not enough Jesus. Is that true? Are you ready for this? Yeah, that was four minutes, by the way. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Wait, I round actually, of applause. I, I actually started at the <laughs> one minute. I actually started like one minute after he started speaking, so he's actually technically five minutes, but still, he, you still you still did it. So I appreciate you. You actually if are. I, if I had a soundboard, there would be You can add the sound later. You can add the sound later. Just, <laughs> just add, add a round, round of applause right now. I'll put it in there. That's a marker right there. <laughs> okay, so first of all, I think any time we deal with judgment or how do we, you know, for the for the mass majority of people and church and whatever, there has to there has to be a difference between judgment and, and accountability. And that that ultimately revolves around how we are involved inside of our own churches. Like, OK, if I say if I generally make a solution of, yeah, there needs to be a balance within all the churches, how is this conversation? How is this podcast going to make anybody out there implement anything that causes that balance to happen? I mean, we can't. We can't. Yeah. But unless we actually physically say, well, for my church that I am in, the only way that that we can do that, that I feel like we can make a change or or have that semblance balance is, oh man, I'm talking about specifics here. Well, let me let me not talk too too many specifics. Basically, here's what I feel. I feel like in our church service, we need to be able to protest things that the church universally knows is wrong. But what I do not think we should do is make the pulpit a political stance, a Amen. place, to, a I place. Agree. To I agree. Because you got Democrats, Republicans, liberals, independents, all kinds of people in here who think of all kinds of things. If you're going to make a political stance, give everybody's political stance. Don't just give yours and assume that everybody's just going to agree with you. Yeah. Because well, here's, unless your political stance is. I mean, if, again, uh, uh, universal if, truths. If like, your political stance is founded upon by whatever the Bible says, but look, look, even, that's even with that, there are there are conservatives that believe something, where Democrats believe something, and they are mostly and some of the principles they have are found inside inside of Scripture. Because we tweak things in a particular well, if, way. If you have a candidate that's like, hey. You know, I'm running to stop the death penalty, and it says thou shalt not kill in the Bible. Yeah. And you're like, hey, maybe we should, you know, <laughs> be on this dude's but, side uh, because he's helping uh, but people saying that, not die. But what, like, that's, but what, you see what I'm saying? It's yeah. not a universal of truth. There's places in the Bible that says the executioner, in a paraphrase, does not have a sword for no reason. Okay, but See, the executioner is who? It's a person that is who's, appoint, who's appointed is by God. God. So anybody in America killing but, people but is appointed the, by yeah, God? Yeah, but, but I'm saying ooh, the death penalty ooh, is something ooh. different, though. Because are they appointed by God? But I'm saying God? the death penalty is a judgment upon a, a, a person's action. That's That goes through a court of law. That goes through several is people. Is our court of law appointed by God? Technically <laughs> 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 speaking, yes. <laughs> let me well, let me answer. The text says the powers that be ordained by God. Because <laughs> otherwise, it's, it's tricky. <laughs> otherwise, here's what you're saying. You yeah. tell me oh, an all powerful guy allowed for little humans to decide who runs his world? If God's in control, yes, they are ordained by God. <laughs> yeah, there's things in the air that drop into it. Yeah, all the time. that was for that. Uh, so weak is, yeah. But, but so that's tricky, and that brings my point. What is a universal truth? 
A universal truth. You know what a universal truth is? I go based off of the freaking Ten Commandments. Yeah, I, I just, I just, I just go off. But of, I, I just based, said, what I just said, thou shalt not kill, so we should is, not. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? That's a tricky one. This, that's a that's a super tricky one right there. <laughs> because at the same time, I feel like the thou shalt not kill one is a personal, like you should not do this. But in the but. At the same time, in the event where people have been killing a bunch of people. Uh, the Bible doesn't say that. Yeah, but, but, there are instances where. But, where, where but, but look, after the Ten Commandments, they went to Jericho. What was the commandment supposedly given by God at Jericho? Yeah, Kill I, I feel everything. Like, I feel like there's a caveat <laughs> there. It's, it's what these Ten Commandments do these things unless I personally tell you otherwise. Like I feel Whoa. like that's the caveat. But, like, but again, <laughs> but but even even with that, right? God has a specific reason why He would say something like that, right? Yeah. The, when I when we say the Ten Commandments, that's more to me. It's personal. more of a personal thing, right? Like but I should I, not. I Stab should you not. In the heart I, right now and kill you. I should not. Me, Mark Misiaki, should not kill, lie, cheat, all that stuff. I should not. But in the event that I have, the punishment of my crime should be this, 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 or this. The the government can then decide if I have now committed such crime that this is supposed to happen. Now, am I saying that the justice system is, is perfect? Heck, no. I'm not saying just. But I'm saying in the event of capital punishment, capital punishment is not given willy nilly. Okay. It's not. But at the it same time. Except for the people that have actually died in the day. Innocently, the yes. I, but there is a there is not a large percentage of that. You can't act like, like, like there's, a, there's not a large percentage. Yeah, there's a large a percentage in Texas that they give out millions of dollars to people who they've innocently in prison for life. Show me the numbers, <laughs> and then I will concede my point. But, but you president put a... Oh, whole article about four black boys that he wanted to, to bring the death penalty back for and turns out the woman lied on them. They were all innocent. So that, that here's my point. It needs to be a God given truth. Because there were a lot of Christians defending this family separation. There are a lot of Christians that don't want to take care of the poor. There are a lot of Christians that don't want the law to apply for them. We, just, we don't need a consensus we need a revelation. I, I agree with that. But at the same time, it's because. <laughs> but, you, but, but. But at the same time, because you did it to me, I'm about to monkey wrench it back to you. <laughs> you just said it needs to be a God given truth. And there have been a lot of God given. The, the JP example was a <laughs> God given truth. <laughs> So, I mean, the anything we come up with is pretty much going to be skewed once you put in human beings. For I instance, even when it comes to the poor, there is a legit scripture where Jesus Christ says there's always going to be poor people. <laughs> I know that's that's thrown out of context. But I'm saying if I just use that scripture anyway, if I use that scripture, there are people who are legit using that one scripture to then be the base. This is coming out of Jesus' mouth. But this is that revelation. That's not revelation. And the Ten Commandments word? They were. <laughs> so <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, it messes up. We all our arguments get messed so up and let, skewed. Let's we, ask the lady. Help us out there. Say, I wow. think it all comes back to: Is it being done out of love? Okay. 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 I feel better with that. Okay, <laughs> is it is it being done? <laughs> is it being done out of love? <laughs> so I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> now you can you can take that. Now I wouldn't take it this way, but I can see some people taking the capital punishment as well. I love the person that was killed. <laughs> I can see somebody going somewhere with that, but that's beside the point. As far as other issues of where. 
the church should stand and where the line should be drawn. Mm. Things like the kids being separated from their parents. That's not being done out of love. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Or people being discriminated against. Yes, you should stand up for that because that's not done out of love. Mm. Or Um, protection or security. None none of that. Exactly. So you can keep bringing up examples that are exceptions yeah. like capital punishment and yeah. we can probably think of a bunch of others I but mean, there, there is there is, there are some very messy lines and mm-hmm. those are those are extremes but this this like there are things that aren't extremes that shouldn't be that hard to figure out and i think where it gets messed up is people are selfish mm-hmm. they're only thinking about themselves and what they want yeah and how it benefits them. They don't think about the benefit of others. But Christ was all about others and putting others before yourself, the golden rule. And I feel like that's why the whole political point of, like, the whole church and politics can be very messy because mm-hmm. it's all about dividing the line. Yeah. And going to my side, going to your side, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that. it takes a level of selflessness to, to just say, you know, I'm going to listen to your point. And and try to get some semblance of truth out of what what you're saying. We're forgetting something. Bring it home. What are we forgetting, Milton? You're taking way too long of a pause, bro. You better say it now. Speak now for heaven. Isaiah sixty one. You got it. Yeah. Sixty one. What? One. Just start reading. This dude asked me to read. I ain't even got no glasses on. All right. <laughs> say, I can read it. <laughs> no, you go to Luke 4. I, I, I got it. Six, you just one through what? You just going to tell me when to stop? Yeah. Okay. Good news for the oppressed. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that the captives will be released and prisoners will be free he has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the lord's favor has come and with it the day of god's anger against their enemies to all who mourn in israel he will give a crown of beauty for ashes a joyous blessing instead of mourning festive praises Festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. All right, that's good. You have Luke 4.18. Oh, Luke 4.18. Give me a second. I didn't know what I was looking for. What you looking for? I was Isaiah 61. Okay. Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for those for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Check this out. Jesus goes in the temple. He asked oh, for the scroll in Isaiah, <laughs> and he gives his mission statement from Isaiah 61. Here's what we're forgetting. Does our stance advance the kingdom? So if I'm making a political stance, why? If I'm making a political sense where I believe one law should be made to make a sin illegal, but in doing so, I'm infringing on people's rights, am I advancing the kingdom or am I making people just do what I want? For example, Let's outlaw lying. So everybody obeys that law. Nobody lies. Does that mean more people are going to heaven? No. No. Why? Because they don't know Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. So, and I'm being good and I'm not uh, 
talking about the actual law they're fighting for, but here's the point. We want to outlaw sin instead of teaching people to live right. Well, that doesn't, one, outlawing sin doesn't help the kingdom at all. Part of the kingdom is free will. That's his point. That's my point. That's his point. point. <laughs> so, so some of this social justice and this action we're doing is not to promote the kingdom. It's to force our ways on other people. The selfish people. Right. It's <laughs> the same thing. So that's what the poem says. Why, why, why are you woke? Are you woke because you want to be popular? Are you woke because you're angry? Because anger does not produce the will of God. Hmm. Unless you're righteously indignant. And when you're righteously indignant, you still treat people right. When you righteously indignant, you don't insult your enemy. See, I think the problem is we get so political that we stop being spiritual. So if I go to a protest and I'm yelling profanity, what's the point? You brought up Martin Luther King. He knew how to fight. The reason why civil rights worked is because they knew who the bad guy was. Because one group was sitting, the other group was beating them up. One group was marching, the other group had water hoses. But we're in this divisive trap well, we're all using the same dirty tactics. Nobody wants to work with Donald Trump. Four years ago, we were all mad because nobody wanted to work with Barack Obama. What's the difference? Hmm. The policies, yeah, but who's going to see that? It looks the same. You can't tell the difference. Actually, actually, I feel like you can, man. You, you, can, you can tell the, the significant the difference. <laughs> I, I got what you're saying. Okay, go ahead. No, he keep, was telling you to speak into the mic. Keep going. Mike. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not. No, no come on. Let's tour this out. Say it with your chest. Yeah, come on. <laughs> no, nope, nope, nope. Keep, keep going, man. Keep so going. you can tell a significant difference. So am I right? It does it look the same or I don't, is okay. there a difference? His, okay, I don't you know think what? it looks the same, but there is no difference between the two. It's basically like, yeah, you might be fighting for a just cause, but if you're fighting for a just cause in the same way your oppressors fought you, then what are you doing that's different? Well, uh, I think the the main difference <laughs> Okay, okay. Let me listen. The main difference is power. Main difference is power. You're talking about a president who was who was being oppressed by a Senate and a and a and a political system that did not agree with him at all. Now we're talking about Donald Trump who is literally backed by almost a majority of the House and the Senate. If they don't if they disagree, he commits a, a smear ad and pretty much the entire American public just doesn't even have have his back. So yeah, he could do what he he can do pretty much what he wants it doesn't matter if i if 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 i try to work with him or not the actual effect and and the 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 end result is pretty much going to remain the same he's going to do whatever he wants to, wants to do but so what constitutional powers did he gain that Barack did not have well, pretty much the power of twitter and public opinion so Barack couldn't have done that. He could have done that. He just chose not to. Because Barack didn't come. Does Barack is not a reality star. Barack is a clean, 
Martin Luther King type of figure. He's not going to go low. He's not going. He's going to go high. He's going to try to talk to people. But when you try to talk to people, that means that you're kind of acquiescing to their stances and to what they want and their and their processes. If you got a guy who's not who doesn't care about your process at all and just does things, what's the point of me? If I'm going to talk to Donald Trump and have a semblance of conversation and try to get him to to do something, I'm a DACA recipient. If I tried to talk to him about trying to get DACA back going going again tell me honestly do you actually believe i would convince him in any semblance of any of any time that it would actually that it would actually work no let's go to my example why are we going to your example because that's not the because i'm walking with you okay why could martin luther king say the same thing about bull connor or most of the white people in power back then. Oh, so you're mm. talking about rhetoric. I'm saying what Martin Luther King could have said, I can talk to these white people nicely. They're not going to care. They're not going to tweet at me. They're going to try to kill me. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get on the internet. They're going to get on a fire truck. And they're going to shoot high pressure water at me. Mm-hmm. What Luther King could have said, they beat me. We walked across a bridge and they beat us half to death. We sent a a bus full of people to ride to freedom and they blew the bus up. We went to church and they blew the church up. So, so we are in this new age where somehow we believe playing dirty is most effective. And it's not your fault. It's what we've been taught. We're operating under this illusion that because the enemy is using every dirty trick in the book that we have to do the same thing. But are you saying that me not meeting with Donald Trump is is playing dirty? Because, no. Because that's what you were framing it as when you said we're not working with, with Donald Trump the same way we're working with. We're talking. You were talking about people who just don't want to meet with the man. We're talking about uh, but, like, like, like. But I don't think that's playing dirty. I think that's playing scared. You meet with them now. Some folks, I agree with that because I don't want them to be a follow up because there's a level of deception. Well, people are meeting with him, and it looks good and nothing's happening. I agree with you. But here's what I'm saying. There are other people that spend their time making fun of him, telling jokes about him, disrespecting the office of the president, which is the same thing they did to Barack Obama. And it's the same Game. The devil is playing the same game for 16 years, it feels like. My argument is this. We got to know how to fight the right way. And it ain't going to work the first time. But my Bible says, be not weary and well-doing. Don't get tired of doing the right thing. Because you shall reap if the work out if you don't give up. My question is, how do we represent the Lord when we fight? Let's go talk to Trump. Let's be respectful. And when he dodges you out, he'll look bad. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Recognize the bad guy. Don't look like the bad guy. Yeah. 
Mark looks like he has something to say. I'm not right. saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I don't, okay. I don't want you to explode. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. no. Okay. I, I think I think it's a little bit of false equivalency. I think I think a lot of false equivalency is always happening with Trump. And and I think okay, I understand what you mean when it comes to Christians. You know, we need to be better. We need to rise higher than 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 whatever. But there's always a semblance of false equivalency when it comes to fighting fire with fire. Nobody is doing what Donald Trump is doing. No, 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 no. Let me not say that. Let me not say that. There are people who are doing what Donald Donald Trump is doing, but not to the level at all that it has been done to 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 Obama. And it's not even and and it's and it's this not even not not, oh my god, not even close. So it's like I think the problem here though is is God doesn't care about what level you're doing it at. But it's not even it's not even. But here's here's the problem with the fire meets meets fire. Even in the example of me meeting with Donald Trump, right? (laughs) Uh, you know, me going to, uh, to a higher place to be able to going with, with, with a, within a higher place to just talk to the guy. Right. Yeah. And I could do that. And I and if I had the opportunity, more than likely, I, I would do that. But if I had the choice and I said no. I should be able to say no. And that should not be equip That should not be equivalent to me firing fire with fire. It shouldn't. It should, I don't think that's what he's saying, though. I don't think that's the point. I think the point is if the people that are in power that are oppressing you are killing and lynching you and fighting you, Mm -hmm. like you shouldn't be doing the same exact thing that they're doing or similar or anything similar to fight them back. Well, hey, let me because that's not Christian. Let me let me throw this this monkey wrench in in, in the whole thing and see every piece mm-hmm. of this monkey wrench real quick. All right, all right. Let's uh, let's say we talk we talk about uh, you said you said what was the phrase? Uh, yeah, people in power uh, do bad things, and and we can't do those same bad things to them. Right? Is is that is that correct in what I'm hearing? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yes. Yes or no. Yeah, yes. <laughs> is, that, is that correct in what I'm hearing? Right. Mm. But, but what happens? Right. What happens if? Let me give a small example. Okay. If that if that works out well. What happens if uh, let's say your people are oppressed uh, by a you know a, a awful power and God says we need to take you out of out from under this awful power and that very king and all their firstborn children are going to die as a result of it. <laughs> or you know you know maybe let's no. let's talk let's talk about maybe uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go into this one place I'm gonna bring you guys all into this one area and we're gonna slaughter every single person inside this hole inside our. Uh, but I just right. told you the only caveat to the rules <laughs> is when God specifically says, "Hey, you know what? I need you to break these rules." See, but are you? But are you? That but, when Jesus came, those type of things changed. Well, <laughs> well not, not, not necessarily. Wait, I mean, wait, you know. we're still under my rule. Watch this. God says, "I'm an embarrassed Egypt." Mm-hmm. You know every play God sent cor- corresponded to an Egyptian god. Yeah, the plays were random. Mm-hmm. God was making a fool out of a false god system mm. Mm. for the kingdom. I'm mm. still in the text. When they went to Jericho, God was a fancy. The kingdom. Mm. We're not trying to invest the kingdom. We're trying to get even. Oh, so so you're saying when when I when I when I show that uh, <laughs> when I show that Donald Trump is a fool, I'm not doing the same thing. No, you're showing I that he's a fool. King. So me me to me telling everyone me me uh, showing that 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 uh, <laughs> God doesn't say we're we're supposed to be separating children and making Donald Trump look a fool is that is that not a or maybe when whenever he you know makes fun of a disabled person, I make and I and I let and I let everybody know that he's pretty much you know no, an idiot who you, doesn't know what he's you, doing in office. You can correct him and not call him an idiot. But at the same time, didn't Jesus himself call people fools? I mean, there is scripture where Jesus legit have called Pharisees you fools. 
you fools. Isn't that the same thing? I think he said you vipers. Is, isn't that I worse? Know, <laughs> I don't know if that's any better. But, but. Here's the thing. My issue with this is, my, my issues, generally speaking, is that sometimes, and it's, it's really overboard on, on, on both sides, is that we sometimes equate Christian to being nice. We got to be nice the entire time no, when, we, no. when we do stuff. And it's like, no, we don't. We, Let me clear this up. I'm not advocating being nice, quiet, sedate, calm. I'm advocating being righteous. I can be angry and righteous. I can be loud and righteous. I don't think I can cuss you out and be righteous. I don't think I can insult you and be righteous. It's not necessary. I can say separating children is evil. I can say it's malicious. I can say it's a bad idea. I don't have to call him stupid. I can go in my clergy attire with a bullhorn and place myself in front of the White House because the truth of the matter is that's kind of what the prophet Jeremiah did. These prophets were yelling in the streets. They were protesting. But when I go, I got it. Can't do anything that will bring a blemish on the kingdom. I can't give anybody an opportunity to say the Christians are evil. Even think about this the people that support Donald Trump. A lot of them are mad at Obama for good reason, because they ain't got no job. And they can't feed their kids. But instead of pushing for that, they blame it on dark skinned people. So the fact that they don't have a that they do have a need is being ignored because of the vitriol that's coming from the group. You got to understand the devil doesn't pick sides. He plays both sides. So you got people that are right that nobody will listen to because they have evil hearts. You got people that are wrong that nobody will listen to because they got evil hearts. And the devil is laughing because we're all divided. Ain't no solution because we're too busy fighting each other. <laughs>